Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. We're so glad you could attend. Come inside. Come inside. What do we have in store for today, you may ask? Da-da-da. Creality Direct Drive Extruder Shark. This is the EFIT Extruder. And once again, these guys would not send me one. So, for the low, low price, I bought this. They had a coupon code, so it was 35 bucks. And I'm going to mount that right here. Likey so couple of little things that have to be done. There is a plate that comes with the setup, but again, we have a proprietary schnozzle end here. So the one that they supply will not work. What do we do? I'm going to... Now that I have it, I, I asked them for solid models of this stuff, and they, they couldn't give me crap. So now what I need to do is reverse engineer where the business end is going to go to ya figure out what needs to be done, and then print out, even though I just printed this out the other day in good old PETG, lovely, I'm going to have to print out a new adapter for the linear truck that allows me to have some mounting provisions for another bracket that's going to come up, and then this will just rest so lovingly onto. The kit comes with mounting plate, for the X carriage, comes with this guy here, which is a fan plate, which doesn't do you much good if you've got dual fans. Only if you have the Creality only fan. But we don't have that. So the bracketry goes away. And try to use as much of the where did it go? Try to use as much of the hardware as came with it. But if not, I'll just have to use more of the M3 screws and some more brass inserts. So stay tuned. We're going to rip this thing apart and have at it and see what we can do. All right, I took off the old pneumatic schnozzle. They put the one that they supply on, but there's a little bit of a gap. I've got the thing on top here. I still need a bracket to keep it from spinning. But really, it just kind of goes along for the ride here, which is okay. Aside from the fact, turn the light out, it's hard to see. Aside from the fact that I'm going to do something with my linear guide truck here. But the way that I have the, the truck mount design, that I can cobble something together where I can zip tie the wiring to here. The wiring gets kind of in the way, but... My biggest concern is that. I might have to make a little spacer. I'm not too keen on that, but I just don't want anything to... I don't know how deep these things screw if they bottom out or what. It does come with... You know what? It's probably not a big deal. It comes with a length of... Lovely off-gassing PTFE tubing. So I just have to do a couple of calculations and cut a piece of Capricorn that'll fit in between here with a little bit of the extra rise. I'm going to do a reverse Bowden setup from the original extruder. Take off and disconnect the motor, but then keep the... Keep the filament guide in place, I believe, because I'm not going to move the, I'm not going to move the sensor. So I kind of want it to be a straight shot from there through to here, reverse Bowden setup to here, and then from there straight down into the belly of the whale here. So it looks like, looks like we're going to have a winner. I just have to. I knew this was gonna I knew it was gonna come down to having to make mod parts, but it would have been nice if they sent me the model of the assembly, but they're not as open source as they claim, I guess, because I asked them for the models and they told me to kiss off. 
they 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 have a they have a bad habit of saying no. <laughs> I will give them that. At least they're at least they uh, they stick to their uh, they stick to their their guns there. So I I like it. It's gonna look. It's gonna work. I think it's gonna it's gonna look cool. Number one, but I think it's gonna work well. Is, uh, is the biggest part. So let me get uh, let me take some measurements. Whip up a new design for this, and yeah, I think it's good. It's gonna clear here, so that's good. Uh, and so far, it's it's looking promising. Okay, so first issue makes sense. First issue makes sense. The Creality motor I hooked up to the existing cable. And what would you know? Doesn't want to move. What does that tell me? That tells me that I have to do the same thing to this as I did to the stepper motor, reverse the two center wires. I'm going to try that right now and see if that works. Because it, it, it to me it just makes sense because I had to do the same thing to the Creality motor for the Dual-Z. So, let me switch the wires and we will we'll see how that works out. Don't try this at home, kids. The only way to find out if the stuff is running the right way is to make the stuff run the right way. So stepper motors have A coil and B coil, and they got positive and negative for each. The Creality cable comes pre cattywampus on one side. Which side is it? It's the this side here, yeah. It comes pre cattywampus on the one side, which leads me to believe that there may be more than one wire out of whack here. But I trace the you can trace the the poles on a stepper motor by putting a jumper between putting a jumper between two of the wires and then try to spin the motor and see if you feel like a, a lock up, like a kajunk kajunk. So I got, I know that side by side, each of the phases are correct. It's just a matter of getting the right motion out of the ocean here. So that's why I've got this cockamamie set up here before I go pulling apart that JST connector, or DuPont connector, or whatever, whichever one that is. Well, the good thing is that it works. So just straight in, it works. It runs backwards. But that's a firmware fix. I can get that to... I can get that to work with just a straight cable. Actually, it's even better than I thought. All I have to do, like I said, cross the two middle wires. One, two, four, three. Well, it's really like one, three, five, or one, three, four, six coming off of this, but it's take this, crisscross the two center wires just like we did, and not have to invert any pins directly off of firmware. It should. It should load no sweat. I have to at least change the EE prom setting for the E steps, but this gives me hope that this is going to work. It's definitely going to work. I just have to design a bracket. Once I design a bracket, print that up real fast, and winner chicken dinner. Okay, so while I don't have a mounting bracket for it yet, I do have. The unit mounted, I think that's the way I'm going to go with it. Kind of like the way that this kind of falls into place here, except for the fact that that's blaring me dead in the face right there. But So I had to make a spacer about three millimeters tall. Gives me a little bit of an air gap underneath that. If I wanted it to sit directly on the truck, then I could just make it a little bit shorter. But thinking that the motor might get hot, the... Uh, the, the truck adapter is PETG now. I did print them in PLA originally, but I printed out PETG the other day. Uh, I'm going to do this in a reverse Bowden style, as I mentioned. I'm going to take the drive gears out of here, but I'm just going to leave this mechanism because I like this little nozzle. But ultimately, that's what it's going to boil down to being. There's a release lever here that you can use to lock in and unlock the filament, which is cool. So you can get it down up in there and lock her in place. There's also a thumb 
release right there. The wire's kind of getting in the way, but I have to come up with a provision for routing those a little bit better. But yeah, it's uh, it's getting there. I have to set the E steps right now, and I have to print out the adapter plate that I want to uh, incorporate. But I figure, smoke them if you got them. I'm gonna <laughs> try and do it with this thing just dingling out in the breeze. It should be fine. So let's see, uh, let, let, I'm going to set the E-steps in Octoprint, and I should test a, uh, I should do an extrusion test, I guess I'll do that, I'll, I'll do the E-steps in Octoprint, I'll do an extrusion test, and see what is what. So I really went shade tree on this one, I stuck a piece of filament in between just to keep the motor from spinning. It wasn't moving, but I just want to be on the safe side. It's just about to do... First test right now, I'm going to do the test strip, then it's going to print out a piece. So far it's working okay, coming into position, and let it rip. They set the retraction to only one millimeter, so let's see how this does. It's going to take three minutes for it to actually do something presentable. But it's <laughs> it's all working. Only one uh, one change to the wire, and I've got the E step set for about 418 steps. It says 405 in the book, but 405 was a little on the low side, so I'm doing 418 right now, and we'll check back in three minutes and see how she does. I'm just printing out another one of these spacers just as a test terrible youtuber moment number 6475 so i did say that i was going to come back after i was done making this and here it is but that was yesterday i happen to spend a good majority of my evening doing uh r d work trying to get the new x-axis truck adapter and side bracket uh, drawn up and figured out. I got the I got the new x-axis carriage. I have to knock the brim off of it, but there she is. I'm gonna put the brass inserts, mount her up. It's got a mounting provision on the side for the three holes here. So I'm gonna print out the bracket for the side. And then I will mount this truck, put the bracket on, and see if it fits. Hopefully it fits. I gave it a little bit of clearance as far as the screw holes are concerned. And I gave it a little bit of play left and right on the back side. So I've got room this way to adjust, and I've got room this way to adjust. So hopefully that works out. Just about to hit print. I've, got to <laughs> I've been... Uh, I've been using this little piece of filament back behind the extruder so it doesn't rock side to side. Because if it rocks side to side and the x-axis tries to go home, it's going to hit the, the z-rail. So stay tuned. PETG is a bit of a fickle fellow. doesn't like the post-process very well. So hit it with a little bit of sandpaper, a file, whatever. Just clean it up a bit. Pushed in the bushings and now look from looking from the camera I didn't do such a great job at knocking off the high spots but there she is we got the bracket printing now I really should lower my acceleration numbers without that thing being mounted but yeah, I'm not really keen on this uh, material it likes to booger up the nozzle more than it likes to lay down so hopefully this will be done without any major snags, and I can move forward. So far, it seems to be working okay. It's it's working the way it should be. You'll notice I took the stepper motor off yesterday. I kept half of the extruder, which is just being used as a filament guide at this point, through the Bowden tube. I was thinking of doing something up here a lot of the direct drive systems have the spool mounted up here and then they come down to filament detector and down i might do something like that but for now this seems to be okay 
a little bit of a, a little bit of a tangle at the very top with the stuff the way it is, but I've only got it held on with bubble gum and a prayer right now. But I was thinking maybe if I took the long piece of Bowden tubing that I had and made something where it came up and around, but I don't want the distance from there up loop around to be that great because once the filament sensor detects that you run out of filament now you got two feet of filament that you still have to use and you got to bypass the sensor and let it do its thing but that's the joy of research and development is that you get to see where the faults are and figure out ways to remedy them so there it is in all of its hairy glory i got it bolted in place you can see how it fits now and if it fits, I'll clean it up a little bit better and get ready to mount everything on. Well, I tend to live by the old saying, if you don't measure it twice, you're making it thrice. The only issue I'm seeing is this whole location is supposed to be over here a little bit more. Other than that, it seems to fit. It works pretty well. Uh, it holds it securely. I mean, it's nice. Uh, the issue, one issue, is PETG doesn't seem to like these screws unless they're sitting inside of a counter bore it kind of wants to take the meat out of my potato there i'm gonna have to get me some i need one more button head if i had one more button head i could put three here and two here and be done with it i have to print out one more just to kind of fix the little snafu on the bottom here but i mean this thing is it's on there now it ain't going anywhere Neither is that. Oh well. So that'll uh that'll kind of do it for now, I guess. I mean, not really much else to say. So there you go. Elegoo Neptune 3 with the Creality E-Fit Direct Drive Extruder. Thanks for watching. See you soon.